I'm so glad that you agreed to watch The Whale and us talk about it because when I left that movie, there was so, so many thoughts. And yeah. I came into the movie with a bunch of preconceived notions because there was all this hype. They didn't release a trailer for forever. Brendan Fraser, it's his return to acting. He got a seven-minute standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival for this movie. So I went into it pretty geared up to like, I, I'm, I'm going to need my Kleenexes. I know like it's going to be this brutal thing, you know, this deep dive into human emotions. And it was not what I expected. Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was thinking the same as you. You know, it's going to be just from what you see from the the trailer is you're like, oh, man, this is going to be, you know, emotional and mm -hmm. you know heart pounding the whole time and it, it it wasn't that for me well and to i think you react to it differently depending on where you're at in life you and i are like right at the cusp of around 40 ish we got kids we've had you know family kids of various ages and all stages of life that makes you look at something like that differently yeah, when yeah, you sure. when you have a glimpse that's sort of like a moment in time in somebody's life, which this movie is, if if you are into, not to give too many spoilers, because in the description we'll have time codes of where the spoilers are for the review. But right now we're gonna keep it spoiler free. I will tell you, teeny tiny spoiler. It's kind of like a week in this main character's life, Charlie, the guy that Brendan Fraser yeah, plays. Yeah. It's like a week in his life. So. Um, a very important week, by the way, without to give any spoilers. Um, when you're going to deep dive into somebody's life who has a very specific human situation, you respond to that based on where you're at in your life, I feel like. Mm. Yeah. You know. First off, though, walk me through, without spoilers, uh, the quick and dirty of what you thought about the movie and why. Mm. Well, the first thought I have is that it's not a movie that will entertain you. Mm. It, it's a movie that'll make you think, not like a, a suspense or thriller, or like you know, like a who, uh, not like a whodunit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not like that. But uh, but more like you kind of have to approach the movie. It's it's almost like reading a book. Mm hmm. You know the way that Agreed. it's written. It was originally a play. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, you know that was which made me want to read the play. Like I'm mm. so curious. I'd like to read the play or have a reading of the play with with. My, with friends of mine being characters and read the play or whatever, yeah. like that would be pretty cool. Yeah. But I don't know if I have that many friends. <laughs> but <laughs> I agree with you, one hundred and ten percent is definitely a movie that makes you think. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, let's go first off what you rate it, and then and then dive into those because what kind of person you are, what kind of movie you like, will then determine whether you like that about it. That it's a movie that makes you think of stuff. Yeah. I, I do like those types of movies, um, and without factoring in my expectation. Okay, okay, um, that's important. Actually, I would I would give it a seven mm. out of ten. Yeah, that makes me think. So it, it kind of didn't live up to the the reputation you thought, or like the the expectation you were loaded yeah. with. It's gonna I'm gonna be crying the whole time or something. Yeah, I think everything was really really done well. Mm. You know. Uh, Whenever they're the the character portrayals and 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 all of that is is done well, but maybe I was expecting something a little. You went bit into it different. jaded, maybe. A yeah. Little bit. Well, yeah. The the Charlie character is directed well and played well. I feel like it still could have been more actually, mm. but I looking back on it, I understand what they were doing though. You felt like you could have been more sympathetic for his character if they'd have done certain changes or whatever? Well, if you want to get into that. <laughs> Is that spoiler territory? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What do you think about his body? Like, Because Brendan Fraser's wearing a fat suit, right. like, you know what I'm saying? And if this offends you, I'm sorry, get over it. Like, I'm not being offensive. He's wearing a, a prosthetic yeah, fat it, suit. It, it's, it is what it is. It's reality. Yes. You know, for a lot of people. Yes. And like I said, that part I thought was really directed well mm. because there are several individual moments where it's like you're you're looking at this person in in a different way because 
because of the way he has to move his and mobility. He, I was just going to say his mobility, yeah, his mo- all of that very much was done so believably well, like super yeah, believable yeah. in my opinion, for yeah. sure. Like I agree with you there. Like his portrayal of that condition and that situation and circumstance mm-hmm. is killer. And the mental aspect that he, that he brings to it as well, mm-hmm. I think is, is well done. For me, just looking at it, you can tell this from the trailers. Uh, it is a story about Charlie. He's a 600-pound guy. It's a week in his life. He's got a daughter. So if you've seen the trailer, it doesn't spoil it, that he's estranged from. And it's about him reconnecting. It's about the human spirit. But it's more, it's more than all of that. Those are kind of like the broad strokes. More than all that, it's, it's a specific look at a specific circumstance and a specific story. Hmm. And uh, I think it's the kind of story that's going to tick a lot of people off. People will hmm. find, could find a lot of reasons to not watch it mm-hmm. if they want to. And I should be technically because some of the labels that I wear, and this is where I thought we would kind of get serious for a second, there be, should be a lot of things that really tick me off. I think people would hmm. assume that, and I just, and they don't. They have a different effect on me. For me, it was more like a, uh, I don't. I give it like an eight and a half or a nine because mm. I agree with you. I did not. I only had like one. There's just one moment, man. One or two moments towards the end where you're like, oh, like you're yeah. really tearing up. Yeah. And it's really happening. Like it's got you in your feels really hard. And they make a couple of artistic choices that for some viewers who want who who want a lot of closure and want like a story beginning, middle, end, voila, mm-hmm. that I dug, even mm. though. I could see how some people be like put off by it, and mm. we'll get into those during in the spoilers. Okay, but yeah, I give it about like a nine because because I enjoyed it from start to finish, mm. and enjoying it from start to finish, considering that its setting is virtually the same place the entire time. It's right. like ninety something percent that house. Yep. Artistically, I respect how difficult that has to be to make mm. an interesting story in one basically one room almost like that's yeah. hard do you have to wear some thick skin in this movie yes because it could be triggering for some folks like really yeah I, <laughs> there's a couple parts where i was like uncomfortable yes like absolutely. i was like a little bit anxious a little bit uncomfortable and i was like oh i don't know how i feel mm-hmm. about that you know in my opinion if you want a movie to make you think if you want a movie that's going to make you introspective about your blessings i think it was sort of like a psa hmm. in a way of like don't take your life for granted. Uh, you know, like human beings are flawed but beautiful. You know, and to me, it's it's a representative. It's a piece of art that represents the power of choice. You know, mm. there are a thousand choices you make every single day mm-hmm. that affect your situation. When something happens in your life, when you face tragedy or whatever, like there's going to be a thousand choices you make after that. Like, what do you do? Mm. You know, and for that reason, I really appreciate this movie because it's like mm-hmm. you show it to somebody like, hey, man, I want to pump you up to get the juice your life. You know, for all it's worth, I would show them that movie. Yeah. And, and that sounds weird because it's kind of <laughs> depressing, you know, like <laughs> that movie is. But yeah, I would be like, you want me to show you how to juice your life up really hard and like get mm-hmm. pumped to, to, to get the most out of your life yeah. and try it so you can one day have no regrets? I'd be like, check this movie out mm-hmm. <laughs> in a wow. weird way, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but... Now I, I want to be able to talk about it freely without having to like <laughs> geld every single thing that I want to say. So spoilers yeah. all over the place right now. <laughs> so a couple of things I want to talk about in the beginning. There's a very in the very early on in the movie, he's he's pleasuring himself to to homosexual porn. Yeah, that's the first <laughs> first thing you see of him, yes. I think, in it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the part that I said is designed to to like I'm a Christian traditional christian like like hardcore bible belt that's designed to be like oh i don't want to watch that in a movie you yeah. know and it didn't like because of the way it facilitated the narrative i was like okay it didn't bother me mm. like it should have yeah. and and i could i could definitely go without seeing were, were you <laughs> that, shocked at all to to learn that he was homosexual the, oh the realization that he was gay was yes a big time shock i did yeah. not expect it was going right, that, that was not previewed at all matter of fact there are a lot of anti-church there's there's anti-church anti-organized religion Mm. uh anti there are some messages that are good like anti-discrimination um throughout the course of the whole movie but 
the, none of those things bothered me the way they should. Like, how did you feel? Because you and I are both believers. We come from a very similar background. We got pre- preaching dads, you know, like we're preacher's mm-hmm. kids. How did the the sort of anti-church, anti-religion, those themes, how did that, the portrayal of the church in the movie, how did that? I'm st- maybe still a bit confused about that mm. uh, because I'm I'm not sure if they wanted to portray it that way, the way that I'm seeing it, mm. or, and, and the way that I'm seeing is that. I was going to say, how are you yeah, seeing it then? The, the way that I see it that they portrayed it is, uh, you know, you have this this missionary who's trying to push his message on on somebody who don't want it, who don't need it. You know, he's yeah, and uh, he's been hurt by you know the church or the religion, and he also uh, says he's read the Bible yeah before. several times yeah yeah, and uh, he he comes to the point where he's like he points out a specific verse in the Bible, and he's like, you think that's what this is? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like it might be. You know, it could be the truth. Yeah, but you know, Charlie's gonna deny it because that's not the way he sees it, not the way he feels about it. And it's like he, you know, basically says, "What you're doing here is useless to me." Well, and that's the particular verse that his his lover highlighted, right? Right. You know, that was big to him, mm-hmm. and it's this verse about essentially he chose to be in a homosexual relationship versus eternity with God, mm. more or less. Like, get, right. deny all the faith and excommunicate yourself from the faith, and which which included his family, because mm. Charlie's lover, the one that he left his family for, was the son of the pastor of the big church and all that hoopla, or someone really working in that church, right. however it is. So his lover was having to excommunicate himself from the church, from his family, everything, mm-hmm. to be with Charlie. So... That verse was what he was wrestling with on the daily, yeah. which is part of what I think led to his suicide. Right, was feeling yeah. like he was spiritually dead or yeah. spiritually damned because he was emotionally in love and emotionally fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, someone mentioned something very similar to me just this past week about uh, the actor Leslie Jordan, who had died recently. Hmm. Um, I don't. I don't know her. Him. Him, sorry. Oops. He's uh clearly don't know. <laughs> I don't know this person. He was the he was the little older guy who uh, had a country accent, and he was like super hyper. But he grew up in the church, mm-hmm. and he always wanted to sing hymns. And whenever he was like around musicians, that's the songs he wanted to sing. But he had same sex attraction. Yeah, and he's like, I pray every day. That I can make it to heaven, even though I have these. Pray the gay away. Yeah, yeah like every day he had to like ask, if he felt like he had to ask for forgiveness every day because he had these mm. attractions, and you know he didn't he didn't die of suicide down the car wreck, but the character in the movie, you know, probably had that same struggle. You yeah. know, like you know, I know the faith. But this is I'm in the flesh. I'm feeling this, yeah. And it's a war, and you know, one of them uh, is going to win, and it's you know, whichever it, whichever dog you feed. It felt like he was dying of of anorexia a little bit because he wouldn't eat. It was like a hunger yeah. strike or something like that, is what they were describing in the movie. Mm-hmm. And then wound up dumping himself in the river or something. However, that was yeah, they found him in the like river. That, yeah. So I guess he committed suicide mm-hmm. that way. I, I well, we're not allowed to say that. I I. Can't say suicide. He ended his life. He ended his life somehow <laughs> through the course of ha- you know suffering with anorexia and all that stuff and mm-hmm. and major depression. Major anxiety. depression wound up drowning in the river. So to me, I feel like the movie felt definitely like it was designed to sort of condemn organized religion in a way. Mm-hmm. Like organized religion is the reason why Charlie never didn't feel accepted. It's the reason why his his lover ultimately ended their own ended his life and it's and that is the you know chain reaction of that is why charlie started just eating and and just eating and eating and eating and now Mm -hmm. and never going out anywhere and now he's miserable in his own skin barely able to function and literally the movie focuses on the last week of his life Mm -hmm. you know we can say that now because spoilers but um the whole process was to more or less to condemn religion and i felt like in a matter of fact 
the minis- the missionary guy who comes in reality, he's not even a real missionary. Mm-hmm. He's f- stole and run away from the organized church, and he's the one trying to do the most good, the one who's run away from the organized church. Mm-hmm. So all of that, as a preacher's kid who's very much like I... I I lead worship in two different churches, you know, throughout the week. It's part of my livelihood. I've been doing Christian music for 20 years. That's designed to, to you know, irk me, mm. you know. But the truth is, I don't, I believe in art without uh, these ideological agendas. I believe in art that tells great stories. And the truth is, those kind of stories where people have been church hurt are real. Oh, yeah. They happen. A story like Charlie's is out there, where he's been hurt by the organized church, for sure. Mm-hmm. And I feel like those stories have every right to be told and every right to be aired out and, and, and to be expressed artistically, just like anything else. And so it doesn't bother me mm-hmm. that that was sort of glorifying this anti-church message, because yeah. I didn't feel like that was the theme of the movie. Mm-hmm. I felt like it was just one of the stories that were being told. One thing that I found interesting, and and I had to remind myself of it and actually kind of replay the movie in my head afterwards, mm. is the the essay. Yes. Where, which it ends up being his daughter's essay from I like eighth grade. I didn't think it was grade. his daughter's. I didn't either. I thought, I thought it, was it was from the his lovers. lover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His... his because he was a student. He was a student, right. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was his lovers. Yeah, me too. I'm glad. Yeah. I don't feel so stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, when it says, um, I felt many emotions toward toward every character, I think that's what they were trying to do with every character in the movie. Oh, without question, the, the, it's basically like an allegory or how, however, whatever the right word is there, uh, Moby Dick and the essay about the, the Moby Dick, the book that, mm-hmm. they, that he goes to all the time. It's like this reflection. They're trying to do that with the movie. Yeah. You know, yeah, and sure. that's why the name of the movie is The Whale. Yeah. For crying out loud. You know, yeah. it's like, and I felt that way too. I, I was sitting back thinking about it like, man, they did a great job of making the movie about that essay and about that book, like yeah. a reflection, a modern take on that. Yeah. You know, and that's, I loved that part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I did too. Everything from like whenever Charlie stands up. And he's like so big, dude. It's like, oh man, that's perfect, you know. Oh yes, and so what do you think about? So this is where I said it's. I got no closure in the movie. Mm. The movie had no closure to me because I wanted to see him die. I hate to say this, but you want to see him die, have the funeral, and have all oh, these yeah. emotional, the cathartic moment of the the emotional the closure for closure, for every, everybody right? Else, yeah. That didn't happen. Instead, he starts to walk towards her, which I thought was such a poetic moment. It's yeah. like she's reading the poem he's because he couldn't do it at first, but now he's making the steps yeah, and he's yeah. getting close. But he never gets to her all the way. She doesn't hug him or anything, and his heels take off, and he kind of goes up into this light. Like yeah. it's an artistic choice mm-hmm. that you can interpret it physically. Like yes, he's got all these mental or not all these mental, all these heart problems. He's dying. Of course, he's going to see crazy stuff. He's, he he mm-hmm. dies right there in that moment. Yeah. But I appreciated that artistic choice. But what were your thoughts on that end? Like how it ended like that? I was a little disappointed. <laughs> yeah. You want that closure? Like, well, I don't. I don't know if it was that. It, it was like uh, <laughs> it was the way that everybody left. You know, like uh, his his best friend, the the nurse that's taking care of him. She's like, I'll I'll be downstairs, and she, you know, she that, that's her last scene. You know, she's like, you know, go ahead, you know, do what you need to do with. In our heads, we know his daughter comes down, he's dead, he's on the floor, and all that stuff happens. But part of me wants to see some of that. Yeah, yeah, and like I don't know, just the the way that the missionary leaves, you know, zero and, closure. Yeah, it's like <laughs> wow. Yeah, definitely. Zero closure on the whole movie. Yeah. Um, I mean the the one thing is that, you know, his daughter is like there with him. Yes. You know, and she's, you know, smiling. You, you know, at the end. So like, you know, they they have their own closure, but it's like the main conflict does have resolution. Yeah. Him and his daughter, you feel like 
you know, he dies, let's say, thinking and believing and knowing that he's had a good influence on his daughter and that yeah. she's going to be a good person. Yeah. And, you and feel, she's a jerk the whole movie. And she is a <laughs> demon child the whole movie. She's actively making fun of him. She's posting pictures of him online mm. talking about hell's going to run out of grease when they cook this one or something like that. Like, I don't yeah. know, some awful, awful thing about how fat he is. And uh, he also attempts to kill himself by overeating mm -hmm. in the movie yeah. which was awful to watch well that's also the way the movie starts like he has like he you know the scene we talked about and then immediately goes into uh, the heart problems the heart attack yes and then like he they, finds they, out we, he don't won't go to the hospital so it's a week long process for him to die <laughs> he finds out that he's probably going to die in a week yeah. unless he gets some serious help and he's got all kinds of money saved up but he wants to give this to his daughter who is a butthole, yeah. like hardcore butthole, and he does not want to use it for medical assistance. He's also probably a little bit agoraphobic. He doesn't want to go out. Like you see that when the pizza man sees him mm -hmm. grabbing the pizza. He doesn't want to leave his home. He doesn't want people to see what he looks like Yeah, because he didn't always look like this. And his choice to eat over and over and over was because of the loss of his lover. And his lover died, so he just started gorging himself. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the whole movie is like this deep dive into how each little choice affects your life, mm. I feel like. But I feel like every single one of those stories is worth telling. And I don't feel like those stories, as a Christian and as a believer, I don't feel like those stories belittle my faith or do anything about my experience with God at all. I feel like those stories are actually necessary for faithful people to grapple with. Mm. Yeah, I know. think it helps you understand that every person has many different sides. Yes. Like, you know, you see him and your um, first scenes you see of him are negative. Oh, yeah. And then you say, oh, well, he's been saving up all this money for his daughter. He's actually a really nice guy, you know, and but he's got his other issues. And then I, same with his daughter, same with the missionary, same with the friend. I yeah. love that he was not just a one-dimensional hero mm -hmm. because there are some despicable elements about him. Right. Without a doubt. That they're all human. I'm not saying that him being gay was despicable. So don't don't twist that. I'm not <laughs> saying that him being gay was despicable. What I'm saying is him leaving his family and, and running away and ditching his eight year old daughter yeah. for a lover. I don't care if it's a guy or a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, that was despicable. Yeah. You ditched your family for this love interest. This is a desp despicable thing to me. Yeah. So even what, who would be the hero, the protagonist of the story, you know, him, Charlie, he still is like, he is living in consequences from poor choices. Yeah. And so I agree. I love that, that yeah. there's no yeah. shining white knights in the movie. Mm -hmm. Maybe his nurse, his best friend nurse, who's the sister, like she's yeah. pretty, she's pretty clean in the whole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And his, I mean, her brother, the, the love interest is the pariah. The love interest mm -hmm. is the one who's just. You know, the sacrificial lamb, let's say, that really facilitates the narrative of the story. Yeah. And, uh, but all of those stories are real. Like, I'm sure, mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're based on real people, but I know that those kind of stories happen all the time. Oh, yeah. And how we, and just to not to get super spiritual, but like as believers, how we engage with people who aren't Christian. That doesn't mean that you hold yourself in this really high regard of like, I'm a Christian, so I'm super, super moral. It's like, no, you're a Christian, which just means Jesus has saved you from your sin. Like, yeah. you made one choice that distinguishes mm -hmm. you from somebody else's circumstance. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're one choice away from being you, you know, like yeah. at that point. Thinking about the the young boy missionary, like you can see the shock on his face from the different scenarios that he's interacting it with you know, in, in that apartment, um, but it keeps coming back. Yes. And I think that's a, a good lesson, at least for Christians to be like, you know, you, you're going to encounter some bad stuff, yes. some bad people that you may not want to be around, but and, it's important to keep coming back. And I love that he eventually did admit what was really going on. Yeah. At first, he's like, no, you're not disgusting. I think you're a beautiful person. It's like, no, I, I love the fact that he eventually was like, yes, you disgust me. You look mm -hmm. disgusting to me. I can't stand being around you. This apartment smells. Whatever you want to say. like, yeah. Because that, that, to me, doesn't peel this veil back and reveal that Christianity is a bunch of crap. What that says to me is that Christians are just human beings 
who are trying to embrace a divine way of being, mm -hmm. who are trying to embrace looking at something that would be typically disgusting to humanity in a different light, that they're trying so hard to, to peer through all of this to get to the spiritual. Yeah. You know, like, and so he finally broke it down. I was like, yes, to me as, mm -hmm. you know, Thomas, the missionary human, you're disgusting. Yeah. And he's like, but I'm trying really hard to see you through the spiritual lens, through a mm -hmm. God lens. You know, so to me, that well, that wasn't like, oh, he's a hypocrite. He says he doesn't yeah. find him disgusting. He's like, no, part of him doesn't find him disgusting. Part of him wants... Mm -hmm. It wants him to be saved and have a new body and, and like a in heaven and you know dance with Jesus you know and the other part of him is just a yeah. human who's like I'm trying to figure this out and yes you're nasty you know like <laughs> <laughs> and to me it's like it doesn't make me feel bad as a Christian it doesn't make me it, I'm not disappointed in that character yeah at all I thought it was great yeah yeah it's a I sucky agree. movie Lord <laughs> though like <laughs> being real like it's just you feel dirty watching it I feel like the whole time like yeah because because it feels so hopeless. Mm. I, you know, he's gonna die from the beginning of the movie. Yeah, that is the part that. Yeah. That is the part that frustrates me, is that mm. you know he's gonna die through the beginning of the movie. Yeah. So, you know you're watching the end, <laughs> right? So it's like, oh, <laughs> it's like, it's going to watch Titanic. You know the Titanic's yeah. gonna sink, and I don't mean that. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. <laughs> Uh, but it's like watching Titanic. You know, eventually that iceberg or is coming. reading Moby Dick or reading the <laughs> book Moby Dick. <laughs> if you like this clip from the Not Gospel Studios YouTube channel, don't forget to share. Click on one of the other links and videos. You can find them here and here and subscribe. I think it's down here. Tell your friends about us. Tell them that it's healthy, that it's vegan, and all of those things. Keep being awesome because that's how God made you.